most of, I, I would say maybe 100% of the information that has been leaked about Carson has been coming from the Eagles. And they've been spinning it this way, mm -hmm. that way, and the other way. And they're playing every angle. Carson, has, Carson hasn't said anything, and he's instructed his people not to say anything. What's up, Rob? Rob. Is, oh, look, he's got the go. AC backdrop. Oh, yeah. Professional, go. baby. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Brooks and Harry Mays. An hour from now, and this is hilarious. An hour from now, we have our weekly conversation with Jeff Barles from Book It Sports. And Jeff is, for some reason, the only person that our stream has badgered and beat down into putting up some sort of background behind him, just something professional behind him. And we love Jeff. So now, as we're welcomed in by a good friend of the program, a good friend of all of us individually and collectively, and Rob Motti from the Associated Press, it's just hilarious <laughs> that he comes in right away with the AP behind him. I mean, you look like you just left a press conference. Well, you know, this is – I've done the AP football – podcast all year long so i had to make sure that i was representing them very well we do the videos and everything the only problem i had was i didn't lug this to uh the super bowl with me i didn't want to have to carry the banner around so over there i was putting up like fake stuff radio row was so empty this year a time you guys yeah. i know you guys have been there for years right it was empty man it was it was like just desolate it was, it was a different kind of scene we didn't think it was going to be a radio row i thought everything was going to be virtual so we didn't even attempt to come down there man yeah, you know what happens? We ended up, I end up on Radio Row, and most people there were doing their interviews virtually anyway. Mm, right, so right. it was very few people. The NFL didn't bring in any former players. They didn't bring in any current players. There were some who were uh, brought in for certain brands, but they weren't authorized by the NFL. So it was very limited. It ended up, every one of my interviews was virtual. Well, how wow. many hits are you doing a week right now with Carson <laughs> Wentz and the Eagles once again being front and center in the offseason? I, I try and limit them to friends like you guys. Uh, <laughs> that's crazy. You have to limit them. Yeah. It's, it's I mean, even during the Super Bowl. Yeah. We have to be on the bottom of that list. <laughs> no, nah, it, it, it's wild. And, you know, I came back from the Super Bowl. I worked 94 hours last week, and I just want to spend some time with my girls. And, and Carson Wentz watch is just driving me nuts every day, you know. I know and, it and was, it, yeah. It's hard because you, know you got to keep track of everything, and you got to keep track of all the nonsense that's being reported. And that's where that's where that's where my problem is. You know, I I'm, I'm one of the few people uh, probably in this universe right now to saying that it is, it's just not enough capital to make this trade happen with the expectations of what the Eagles want. I, I, I can't see it. You know, too much money involved, too much of a, of a you know, a guy's trying to, you know, kind of outkick their covers as far as, you know, what. Carson can bring to the table after this last season. It's just not there. The market is not there. I think they're trying to generate a market, but I don't think it's there for Carson. I think he'll stay. That's just my own personal. That that option's on the table. That, that option is certainly on the table. I do think they're going to try to move him. Uh, I feel personally for his best interest, he needs a fresh start. And right. I've been saying this now for, for two months. Now, for, for Carson Wentz, I believe – he should just go somewhere else, get a clean, fresh start somewhere, and try to recapture his old form. The Eagles, I can understand from a business standpoint, if they don't make this move, when you invested all that money in Carson Wentz and you brought in offensive-minded coaches who could work with him, it would make sense to me if you keep him. Right. On the other side of that, guys, though, on the flip side, you're a rebuilding team. You're a terrible football team. You were 4-11-1 and one for a reason. Yeah. Do you want to rebuild around a 28-year-old quarterback who's coming off a terrible season? Maybe you do bring in some draft capital. But the bottom line is, if you bring in draft capital, who's making those draft picks? Do we have any confidence that Howie Roseman is going to use that draft capital and, and pick players who would be productive for years to come? I don't, I don't have that confidence. Yeah. I don't think anybody does. Well, that's well, not an that's not an easy pivot either, right. uh, Rob. If if they you know it's out there, obviously that they're trying to move him, they're taking offers. Maybe they don't have a great offer, and they end up not moving him. How that's a difficult pivot to bring the guy back into your locker room, saying that there's these issues that exist there, and then say, oh yeah, Carson, we love you anyway. Like how that's not easy. This is where this is where Carson's character is 
can be taken advantage of by the Philadelphia Eagles. And it has been because they know this guy will not cause any trouble. They know he will not flat out demand a trade. They know he struggled with whether or not he wants to stay or not. They know he's invested in the community. They know he wants to honor his contract and his commitment. And they know he's not going to be a guy who's going to be a malcontent. So they can dangle him out there. And at the end of the day, if they don't make that move, they know Carson's going to come in here. He's going to do his best because he's a competitor to play. Ultimately, oh, 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 Rob, that's it right there. That's it right there. Mm-hmm. You believe that if they keep, uh, they keep uh, Carson here, that he will fall back in line. And I'm under the assumption this: if he comes back, he gets back into line. He listens to them coaches. He gets better. Has two or three, three hundred, three hundred fifty yard games. It'll be like water over the bridge. We will act like nothing ever happened. And it's I, under the, I, under the bridge. Yeah, water yeah, under the bridge. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. Under this the bridge, yeah, under the bridge. Okay. You've brought that up for three straight days. Yes. The history has shown, and this is not an anti or pro went statement. This is a numbers and league statement. History shows that it's really difficult, if not impossible, for him to come back and put up what you're asking. So right, my right. question is not what happens if he does that. What happens if he doesn't? What happens well, if Carson Wentz comes back, does say, look, I'm here to play, I'm here to, and says and does the right things, but goes out there and plays poorly again? That's where I think, Barrett, we have to add the balance of what could happen right. and where Rob can, and can kind of fill in with some nuance. Well, well, you guys are both right. Both possibilities exist. If he stayed and that option is still on the table, he could return to – forget about 2017 form. Maybe he returns to December 2019 form. I think everybody would be happy with that Carson Wentz who carried that group of uh, practice squad players to the playoffs. But if he doesn't return to 2019 form, it, it's 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 going to be a disaster, flat out. It'll be a disaster. And uh, at that point, then the Eagles, they're locked in. They can't get rid of him. W- yeah. What are you going to be able to trade for him? So th- they may be thinking – if that were a possibility, because it exists, we don't know. We really don't know what Carson Wentz is going to come back like. Maybe right. cut the bait now. I, I, oh, if, if you had to put a gun to my head, I think he's going to be moved on. All right, so let's just take Carson's desire to maybe be somewhere else out of this for a, a second. What is the real m- number one motivation for the Eagles to want to move him? Is it the fact that they're drafting sixth in the draft and they could get a, another quarterback high up there? Is it the fact that they do believe that Jalen Hurts is the next guy? Or is it the fact that they've just given up uh, you know, trust in Carson that he can return to being 2017, 2018, 2019 Carson? I don't think the trust in Jalen is there. I think that they have they have differing opinions within the organization. And I think that was kind of an issue also with what Doug Peterson thought as far as Jalen Hurts and Carson Wentz. Because although it was reported to be that Doug Peterson was a Jalen Hurts guy, I thought it was otherwise. I was told otherwise from Doug himself that he believed in Carson coming back. So I think that the organization – it is still up in the air over Jalen Hurts, which makes sense because we don't know based off of his four games. So what would be the impetus for them making this deal? One, it would be that Carson doesn't seem like he wants to be here. And two, you are a rebuilding team with the sixth pick in the draft. So if you are in that position, now you still got to absorb that cap hit and it's significant, but you're not going anywhere this year. Hmm. You, no, there's no expectation this is a playoff team this year. Rob Motti joining us again, and and I'm curious, just put into perspective what you were saying there at the end about the expectations for either a return or, you know, where the Eagles might stop being hard-lined and be flexible. So in your opinion, based on everything you have in front of you, from knowing the people involved to reporting to also having a, and I'll say higher, this is my term, standard, of reporting than a lot of other people working for the Associated Press. So I'm asking all of that, including your opinion here, formulate all of this. What do you think would be that line to where the Eagles would say, okay, we'll take the deal, but we sure as heck aren't happy about the return? I I believe they need a first-round pick in return. No matter yep. what. They need yeah. a first-round pick in return. They can't sell this without a first-round pick in return. And, Aton, I spoke to two team executives, not 
Eagles executives because I don't believe a thing that comes from them because they're going to try and drive the market. I spoke to two team executives. I did post this on Twitter last week when I was down at the Super Bowl, and they believe that Carson Wentz should be able to bring in a return of a first-round pick. Now, the two guys were divided. One said anywhere outside the top five. The other guy said, nah, 16 to 32. So these are two guys not in the market. And I didn't put this in my tweet, so I'm telling you guys, not in the market for a quarterback. Neither one of them is looking for a quarterback, but they said he should be able to bring in a first-round pick. And I think the Eagles will want one first-round pick. Neither one of those guys said two first-round picks. So if the Eagles are asking for two, two particular guys out of the 32 in the NFL don't think that's going to happen. And I personally don't think it's going to happen. I can't see the Eagles settling for anything less. I don't think they'll reach a point where one big, all right, we'll take a two and a conditional three or whatever it may be. I just can't see it. Yeah, and I think they're going to need a player also, you know, because at this point you can't say that um, Carson Wentz is – I mean, uh, yes, we saw the 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 eleven, you know, the eleven losses that you know Carson was, you know, partly responsible for. But we also know what those, you know, three years before that are. You 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 can't just erase that from your mind. I'm talking about 2017. We're talking about a guy that's a top top three quarterback in the league. Then he goes back in 18 and 19, and he's a top 10 quarterback in the league. And then now he falls off the cliff. Now he's lower five. He's better than where he was. He can't be at that level he was last year. There's no way. He's too competitive as a player, number one. Number two, we've seen his skill set before. He'll be a better player than that. So that puts him right around that 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 18 and 19 type of quarterback. I'll take that all day and twice on Sunday. But at this point, you have to bring me in another player to, to get value with the situation. You know, everybody's talking about this last trade with, uh, you know, Two first rounders and 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 players, it, it's that's just that's that's where the bar is set. We're talking about quarterbacks. We're not talking about running backs. We're not talking about DBs. The bar right. is set. You have to have a first round rounder when it comes to a franchise quarterback. You have to. You can make the argument when Matthew Stafford at his age, with numbers that have not been greater than Carson Wentz's at twenty eight, can bring in that return. Carson, you can make that argument. Now I will tell you this though. Maybe not Carson for a first-round pick and a player, but maybe you package Carson and a bad contract you want to get rid of or something else and move that along for some more draft capital. I don't necessarily think you need a player as it is you need to do something to your organizational advantage, and that might be moving some kind of contract or something with it. Right, right. Harry, you this got one? Crazy, no, I, I, he, he's hit everything that I've – that I thought well, of already. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not. Hold on. Hold You're on. You're done. <laughs> I'm never done. You're never Let's done. Let's look at this, right, Rob? And we'll break in a sec here and wrap the hour coming up in a minute. But I just I want to look at it again from the angle of Carson Wentz because I think from a specific standpoint, it's not enough discussion going on about what actually Carson Wentz can do to aid either his request or the team's request. To right. Play. Yes. So what physically with his contract, what financially can Carson Wentz do to aid his cause if, in fact, he wants out, Rob? Well, we've heard what I think is a very unrealistic solution that was, it might have been Mike Tannenbaum, I believe, the GM who put out there, Carson. Made 20 million. <laughs> like, that just doesn't happen. Soccer. Yeah. We, we, that just doesn't happen in pro sports. Right. And, and you don't have to do that. Like they can move him without having to do anything with that contract. Now, could there be some sort of restructure perhaps? But if you're a team getting Carson back at two years, 40 plus million at 20 plus million per year for a starting court, it's not a bad contract for the team getting him. The Eagles have to suffer and absorb the cap hit. The team getting him, it's not a bad deal. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Rob, we just do us a favor. Hang on one sec here. We're going to break, wrap the hour. Coming up next, it's the middle, phillyvoice.com slash the middle and sports map radio. All right. Go ahead, Barrett. Well, you know, just like you just said, you know, they can't really aid in, in, a, in a, I don't think a player was ever going to aid in it. You know, even even though the, um, the agent said, we'll do whatever we can to facilitate this trade to get them out of here. We know that's not going to happen. Hold on, but Barrett. It, the agent didn't say that. Oh, the agent didn't say that? So no. who, I thought the agent said that. No, that, that, those are there. are reports that sources have said that, and you know, based on you know, check check my Twitter thread yesterday. 
most of I, I would say maybe 100 percent of the information that has been leaked about Carson has been coming from the Eagles. And they've been spinning it this way, that way, and the other way. And they're playing every angle. Carson, Carson hasn't said anything, and he's instructed his people not to say anything. Now, wow. Now, a quick follow-up there. Is, is that because this kid has been around long enough in this city, the person representing him has been around longer to know that if you speak up and say something, you fall into the Roseman Eagles trap? Like the only way you can really, truly, it's like Twitter, right? If you respond to a troll, then you're involved in this thing. Like, <laughs> I, I wonder if that, and you know where I'm going because I see you laughing, Rob. Yeah, it, it, here, here's what happens. Howie Roseman may not be a good draft evaluator. Howie Roseman is a master media manipulator. He's great at it. He does a terrific job. And you saw on Saturday, Saturday, the day before the Super Bowl, leaks come out that the Eagles are closing in on trading Carson Wentz. Mm -hmm. We saw those reports from ESPN. Where did those reports come from? Are they really true? Those reports are coming from the Eagles and Howie trying to drive the market up. And then you see reports countering that. That it's not close, that it's not happening, that the ask where's that coming from? It's from the Eagles trying to say, hey, Carson, we, we, this, this isn't necessarily happening. Mm-hmm. We don't know where all this is coming. They play the media and everybody buys into it. Speculation becomes fact. Gossip becomes fact. All of this stuff becomes fact, and none of it is true. And all of a sudden, he was on the verge. We're Wednesday right now. Did he get traded yet? Nope. Now there's now there's a cooling off period. Right. I thought on Saturday, and, and you know what? And the guys who report this stuff, they can't be wrong because all they can say is, oh, it's a fluid situation. Things have changed. Right. Right. You, as a reporter, have to take in information that you are being spoon-fed by an organization, by a GM, and decide, am I going to be used because I want to give out this information right. to, to, to uh, justify my, my job as an insider? And or do clicks. I want to sit on it? I know right. I can't use it. You know, You know my standards. I'm not allowed to use right. it. But you know, these guys, everybody uses it, and they're allowed to be used, and it becomes fact. And on Sunday, I'm at the Super Bowl covering a game, and everybody's there. Carson could get traded tomorrow. Carson, you were Wednesday. It hasn't happened yet because the Eagles on. wanted to drive up the market. I, I just want to get your reaction on this real quick as we're back. To the middle on the Sports Map Radio Network. Presented by Rocket Mortgage. Live from the O'Reilly Auto Parts studios. Here's Aton Shander, Barrett Brooks, and Harry Mays. At Rob Motti, two A's, two D's on Twitter. Everywhere, from the Associated Press to locally here, 97.5 The Fanatic. Faith on the Field is the show. The book, Birds of Prey, P-R-A-Y, is worth a buy and read. So, Rob, we were playing this earlier, and this is not for you to take a shot at any colleague or anything, but it, it speaks to what you're saying about all of the information coming out from one place, and that's the Eagles. This is an Adam Schefter cut, and the only thing that really jumped out at me was his inflection at the end. Like, this is a guy really trying to sell something, not necessarily just coming out with a report. It's just a question of when they decide to follow through on it. And keep in mind that he's got a $10 million bonus due on the third day of the league year. So they'd have to make that decision by then, but they're not going to move until they think that they have an offer that's worth it for a guy that they traded up to get with the second overall pick that they believe could have won the MVP of the National Football League, that they believe still can be an MVP type candidate in this league. And until the Eagles have the compensation that they believe they're ready to move forward on, a package similar to the one that the Lions got in return from Matthew Stafford. They're not going to move, but they've got good offers now. I think they're waiting for a great offer before they make a deal. Great offer. <laughs> it's, it's, it's how you open a radio show. we got a great show for you today. <laughs> Does anybody ever have a terrible show? Yeah, ever- right. oh, no, no. We got a mediocre one today. I know. I've had plenty. <laughs> yeah, well, Rob, to be fair, Harry has actually apologized for shows that he's done with me. I don't exactly. know if it's fault or our fault. <laughs> But uh, he at least has apologized. Well, Rob, Rob, put it like this, man. I've been tarred and feathered for my view on this whole circumstance, bro. I, I you know, people say you don't know what you're talking about. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm jump to ridiculous conclusions about Harry and I. I <laughs> better analogy than that. Harry. I have Come taken on. the blood of a lot of, of ridicule because 
and and, I, and my shoulders are big enough, and that that and the fact that I'll choke the out of somebody. But you know, I'm just saying this. I I'm I'm on the I'm on the um, assumption that money makes the world go round. The almighty dollar, and that's the reason why Carson is going nowhere. They're not going to take that much of a hit. We appreciate you, brother. Thank you. Thanks, Rob. Thank you, guys. We're back hour two. <laughs> Are you looking for a place to track your action, purchase picks, and share your sports betting analysis with the gambling community? Check out Book It Sports, a social media platform with an unparalleled experience catered for the sports betting community. On the Book It Sports app, you can track all your NFL, NBA, and college basketball picks while getting real-time updates and injury reports all in one convenient place. Start building your following today and stand out amongst your friends by downloading the Book It Sports app on the Apple and Google Play stores. Let's cash some tickets and put it on 